Welcome to the SPCA of Northern Nevada's Green Dot Dog Walking Training Class. There will be a classroom portion of this class and the remainder of the class will be hands-on with a mentor. Dogs at the SPCA have a turnover of approximately 10 to 14 days. They are not here long enough for the SPCA to learn the behaviors of each dog intimately. Then there are dogs who are here long term and may have developed bad behaviors. The primary purpose of this training is to provide a safe environment for the walker, the dog, our customers, and other dogs. This training was further developed so that you are comfortable and confident with our dogs. Most of our policies and procedures are a result of an accident, an incident, common sense, or dog training techniques. The biggest benefit for you will be safety. When this training is complete, you will be able to dress appropriately for dog walking, understand temperature limitations, know the minimum age of a dog walker, sign dogs in and out for walking, read and abide by shelter signage, dispose of waste appropriately, recognize basic canine body language, introduce yourself to an unfamiliar dog, enter a dog's kennel properly, leash or harness a dog properly, know the right of way and awareness of your surroundings, review our play yard security and safety, know our approved walking paths, recognize behavior and health changes, and understand and abide by our bite protocols and procedures. While walking dogs at the SPCA, you must wear closed-toed shoes. We do recommend you wear long pants to protect your legs against jumping dogs and sagebrush. We do understand it is hot during the summer, so the option to wear shorts is up to you. Do not wear anything around your neck that a dog may get caught on, such as lanyards, which may cause serious injury to your neck and back. Do not wear hoop earrings and tuck away all other jewelry. We are not responsible for any items that get broken while you are volunteering. You may store personal items in any open locker outside the break room. We recommend you bring a lock with you to protect your belongings as we are not responsible for stolen items. Air temperatures over 85 degrees raises the asphalt temperatures to unbearable levels. To hand test the concrete and asphalt, place the back of your hand on the surface for 10 seconds. If the surface burns your hand, it will also burn the pads of the dog's feet. In extremely cold weather, please do quick walks with the dogs and avoid walking through snow for longer than 10 minutes at a time. Even though some dogs love the snow, they are still prone to frostbite on their feet and they don't realize they may be injuring themselves by playing in the snow. A person must be at least 18 years old to walk alone. If you are walking with a minor, your minor must be accompanied by an adult at all times. There are no exceptions to this rule. Everything you are doing, they must be doing with you and they may not wander the shelter unattended at any time. You may only walk one dog at a time, even if there are two dogs kenneled together. The adult must be holding a leash at all times. Your minor may have a secondary leash, but may never be the only person attached to any dog, no matter how controllable the dog may seem. You are limited to the dot rating of the minor with no exceptions. If you are a yellow dot walker, but your minor is green, you may only walk green dot dogs while your minor is volunteering with you. There are lots of different signs throughout the shelter, so please be observant and abide by all of them. You will see signs around the shelter such as no chicken, poultry, or eggs, not available or new arrival, quarantine area, or no admittance. There are areas that are always off limits to volunteers and areas that will be periodically off limits depending on what is going on throughout the shelter. Yellow chains strung up across an area generally mean do not pass, but double check with the canine manager as there are occasions when yellow chains are just meant to keep customers out of an area. Remember when you are walking dogs to always take poop bags and clean up any waste the dog deposits. You can find poop bags in dog prep and in stations around the shelter. Please pick up the dog's poop every time no matter where the dog deposits it. Fecal matter promotes the spread of disease and keeping our area clean ensures we can all enjoy hiking and playing with the dogs without the fear of stepping on a landmine or causing dogs to get sick. Take more than one bag with you for cleaning up poop. A lot of dogs will go more than one time since they hold it while kenneled. 
Waste may be deposited in most of the garbage cans in and around the shelter. There are only a few cans labeled no poop, so please don't dispose of it there. Each play yard has a garbage can, and each kennel section has a garbage can. You will use the volunteer walking board to sign dogs in and out for a walk. This board is designed to help canine staff and volunteers communicate with one another. If a dog is missing from the kennel, this board is the first thing we check. You will see a section for special notes pertaining to the dogs, but not all dogs will have notations. Some examples of what you might see written are deaf, use two leashes, harness only, no treats or toys, or chicken allergy. Fill out the fields with the date, your name, the time you are checking the dog out, and the time you check the dog back in from the walk. You are never permitted to walk two dogs at once, even if they are kenneled together. We also ask that volunteers do not walk two different dogs together at any time. This is to prevent altercations between dogs which could result in getting bitten. Dogs which are written in black have not been evaluated or spayed or neutered yet and are not to be walked by volunteers or interacted with until assigned a color on the volunteer walking board. Before committing to walking a dog, be sure to walk through the kennels first so you can familiarize yourself with their body language, size, breed, etc. When you meet a dog for the first time, kneel down to appear less threatening to the dog. The smaller you are, the less scary you are to them. These dogs are highly stressed and see anything new as a threat. Avoid direct eye contact with the dog because eye contact can also be viewed as threatening to an unfamiliar dog. Cup your hand and put it near the dog's kennel for sniffing. Never put your hand or fingers inside an unfamiliar dog's kennel because they may bite you. Do not push yourself to take on a dog even if you are slightly unsure. Walking shelter dogs is unlike walking your own dog as these dogs are kenneled for 24 hours a day and are very amped up. You can always start a walk by asking a staff member to put a dog in the play yard for you to visit with in a different environment where the dog will act differently than it does inside the kennel. We are going to review basic body language of dogs and how to recognize potentially dangerous ones compared to happy-go-lucky types. Notice the dog labeled relaxed and how every part of its body is in a neutral position. The tail is down but not tucked. The stance is straight up and down, not leaning forward, and the mouth is open but not rapidly panting. The dog labeled playful is in a position called a play bow. The rear end is up and the front end is down. The body parts are all slightly elevated, meaning the tail is high and the ears are erect. This dog is excited. These are examples of friendly and easygoing dogs that are likely to be at the green dot level. An alert dog will also have elevated body language. The tail is straight out or straight up. The ears are perked forward. The dog may be leaning forward and the mouth will be closed in concentration. This is a dog who is likely assessing you as much as you are assessing him. He's waiting for you to make a move before he decides what to do next. Wait him out. Remember to get low to the ground and don't make direct eye contact. If his body language relaxes, you're good to go, but move slow and let him warm up to you. The stressed dog is not as severe, but this is still an animal to move slowly with. The dog is making itself smaller out of fear by lowering its stance and pinning the ears to its head. The tail is slightly tucked. He may be leaving behind sweaty paw prints out of stress. The mouth will be open because the dog is rapidly panting. This is a sign of stress. The fearful aggressive dog tries to make himself look smaller by crouching low to the ground. This dog lacks in confidence and is warning you not to come closer. This is the type of dog that may back himself into a corner, but if pursued, he may bite. The ears are pinned to the head, the tail is tucked between his legs, and his mouth is closed. He is telling you to stay away, so don't move too quickly in his direction. The next picture is an example of what a dominant aggressive dog may look like. His body language is completely elevated with a very high stiff tail, his hair is raised, his ears are forward, his chest is puffed, and the dog is leaning forward. He may be growling with his lips raised and teeth bared. This is also likely due to fear, but the dog is protecting himself and his space from intruders. This dog puts up a front and does not want you to know he is afraid. This type of dog is going to take a lot longer to warm up to strangers than the previous pictures we've reviewed. 
pass by and toss him a treat to make friends, but again, avoid eye contact and don't stand too long in front of his kennel. The picture on the left is an example of a dog that is fearful submissive, but not extremely so. The dog will lick the mouth of a more dominant dog or may lick your face out of nervousness. The dog may be sweating between his toes, which is the only place a dog can sweat. The ears may be pinned flat to the head, his tail is lowered but not completely tucked, and his body is crouched. The next picture is an example of what an extremely fearful submissive dog may look like. Notice the tucked tail, the head that's turned away in avoidance of confrontation, the urination done out of fear. Notice how the dog's mouth is closed and his body becomes frozen in this position. The difference between a dog who is rolling over for belly rubs versus one that is just plain scared is the tucked tail of the fearful dog. A dog begging for belly rubs will be sprawled out completely. To enter a dog's kennel, first make sure the dog's body language is non-threatening towards you. Wait to enter the kennel until the dog has all four paws on the floor or is sitting. This is to promote good behavior because every step you take to leash the dog gets it more and more excited. Waiting for good manners is a great way to start your walk off on the right paw, which will make it more enjoyable for both you and the dog. Always open the kennel door inward, which helps back the dog up and keep it from escaping. If you open the kennel door outward, the dog may jump on you, knocking you backwards, which will allow the dog to escape. Move the latch all the way over to the locked position so the bar sticks out a few inches. Step inside calmly and avoid baby talk so you're not overexciting the dog or making it more nervous than it already is. Once you're inside, you'll need to place your foot up against the kennel door so if the dog jumps on you, the door stays closed and the dog cannot escape. If you are unsure about what tool will work the best for you, worry not. Your mentors will show you what they use and get you familiar with at least one or two types. You are never permitted to take a dog off leash unless it is in the play yard. We do not use chain or prong collars here, regardless of your opinion of them, just to avoid misuse or injury. The Weiss walkie is one of our preferred walking tools. It helps with pulling and prevents the dog from getting loose. Make sure the collar can't slip off the dog's head, especially when using the Weiss walkie, which attaches to the dog's collar. Clip the Weiss walkie to the dog's collar. Once the Weiss walkie is clipped to the dog's collar, Wrap the leash around the dog's body. Push the leash through the ring and pull it until the handle comes through. Once it's tight, you're ready to go. To use the Sporn harness, grab the red strap and the black strap on the corresponding side with each hand. Separate them to create a gap, which you will slip over the dog's head with the black straps going over the head first and the red straps closest to you. Separate the red strap from the black strap on each side and slip the dog's front leg between the straps. Push the button on the small square piece and pull it towards the dog's body. This locks the harness in place. Attach your leash to the ring at the end of the line. You're ready to walk. Check your surroundings before exiting a kennel. You are looking to avoid customers, other volunteers, and staff. Maintain a short leash for optimal control throughout the inside of the building. Once you're out and away from everyone, you may handle the dog with a longer leash if that is your preference. Walkers coming in from outside have the right of way. They can't see who is in the building and on their way out due to the reflection off the glass doors. Hang back and allow plenty of space for that person to enter and put the dog away or choose an alternate route. Never take a dog in or out through the front entrance of the building. Customers walk in with their dogs for various reasons and you're not to let our dogs come into contact with theirs. You may not walk dogs through the cat side of the building to keep the cats from getting stressed. Feel free to use the rear exit to the back parking lot or the exits that lead to the play areas. The play yards are the three turf-covered yards closest to the building, and the activity yards are the gravel-covered yards. The activity yards are mainly for volunteers, but you are welcome to use the play yards as long as they are not in use. There should always be fresh water in all play and activity yards. 
It is highly recommended that you walk an unfamiliar dog inside a fenced enclosure before walking anywhere else. That way you are comfortable with how the animal will behave for you once you get outside the fencing. This is especially required for extremely nervous or fearful dogs. Dogs who just got spayed and neutered within the last two weeks will not be allowed off the leash. Their names will be written at the top of the volunteer walking board under leashed walks only. Check the parameters for holes in the fence lines. Dogs should always be supervised in the activity yards as those yards are not entirely escape proof. It is acceptable to leave a dog unattended in a play yard. Please report good and bad behaviors to the canine manager. Dogs are often reevaluated and their dot colors may change based on volunteer feedback and other factors. Always report biting or even attempted biting. If a behavior suddenly changes within a dog, it could be caused by a health issue. If a dog has diarrhea, please bring the bag of poop to one of the canine staff who will provide a sample to the clinic. Report all other abnormalities to canine staff. Dog bites are commonly thought of as vicious attacks, but the true definition of a dog bite is contact made by the mouth of a dog to a person which breaks the skin, even if it was playful in nature and it does not have to be bleeding to be considered a bite. All bites must be reported to the manager on duty immediately. The dog will be placed on a 10-day quarantine period. When released, the dog may be reevaluated depending on the nature of the bite. Any unreported bites may result in a $1,000 fine to this organization from the Washoe County Department of Health. Now you should be able to verbally understand how to dress appropriately for dog walking, understand temperature limitations, know the minimum age of a dog walker, how to sign dogs in and out for a walk, how to read and abide by shelter signage, how to dispose of waste appropriately, how to recognize basic canine body language, how to introduce yourself to an unfamiliar dog, how to enter a dog's kennel appropriately, how to leash or harness a dog appropriately, know the right of way and awareness of your surroundings, understand play yard security and safety, know the approved walking paths, know the methods of basic obedience, understand behavior and health changes and what those mean, and abide by our bite protocol. Now we will split you up into groups with mentors who will walk you through the process. If successful, you will be Green Dot certified by the end of the next segment. Thank you for all you are contributing to the SPCA of Northern Nevada. We appreciate you and all you do for the animals. Have fun and stay safe.